OK, so let's create a, a, a user data model that we can interact with uh, from uh, Node.js. Uh, so it's a good practice to put all your models under a, uh, uh, the same directory, so a directory like maybe models. Right? And, into there, and, and there, you, you create all, you'll find all the models under there. Uh, and, uh, and then um, it's also a good practice to put all the, all the models that are related to one another together in the same directory. Right? So for instance, anything that has to do with a user, uh, we're going to put under the uh, user uh, directory. So in, in here, uh, typically, it's also good practice to uh, split up the schema and the model right, in separate uh, files, right, so that the schema could perhaps, could perhaps be reused in other, other models. Right? Uh, so let's create first a schema that, that uh, describes uh, the user. So this would be user. This would be a schema file. Uh, this would be uh, on the server. And it's a JavaScript file. Right? And notice again the naming convention, right? That the the uh, the object in question are users, right? That's the, the those are the things that we're storing or we're manipulating. Uh, this is a schema, so it's declaring the structure of a user, and this is on the server, right? Because it could be a schema also on the client, right? Uh, you know, written in uh, in in, um, in JavaScript on the client side. Uh, so let's uh, implement it. We'll. Uh, uh, I don't remember if we had installed uh, Mongoose. Uh, let's see, did we install Mongoose here? Um, doesn't look like we did. OK, so let's install Mongoose. Branch. Uh, it's a good practice to, whenever you're adding uh, some new feature, right, to create a branch uh, off of this. So you can say git uh, check out a new branch, and let's say um, we'll call it uh, user uh, model. OK, so we're, we are in that uh, new uh, branch. And in that branch, let's, uh, let's create Mongoose. Let's uh, install Mongoose. So we'll say, uh, um, we'll say uh, npm install uh, Mongoose. And don't forget to save right, so that it records it in, the, uh, in your project file, in your package JSON. Notice that it, declared, it just declared it uh, Mongoose as a dependency. All right, so now that we have that, we can, in the, in the schema, we can um, uh, get a hold of Mongoose uh, by requiring it as a, as a library. There it is. And, oops. and once we have Mongoose, we can declare our own user schema uh, using uh, mongoose.schema. And, um, and here we can declare the, uh, each one of the data types, right? so username, uh, password, uh, first name, and then last name, right? and all the other things. So I said email. Okay. Uh, now by default, the uh, this will be stored in a table, in a collection, not table, in a table uh, that it will take the name of the schema, right, and it'll put model after it, right. And so it's a it's a, uh, but you can override that and say exactly what the name of the collection you want. Right. Uh, so to do that, you can provide here a configuration, optional configuration uh, object that you can say, I want the collection to be called user. So don't choose a name for me. Specifically use this collection name. Okay? Uh, all right, we have that. Uh, once we have that, we, uh, we can now create a model out of this. So right here on the same file. Well, actually, no, we, we, let's export this so that we can use it in the model uh, file. So we're going to do uh, module.exports. Uh, equal user schema. Okay, now I can see this this declaration outside of this file. Uh, so here I can create a model, and this will be um, JavaScript. This will be user dot model dot server dot js. Again, uh, I notice the naming convention. This the entity that we're dealing with is user, and model meaning it's going to provide all the uh, all the CRUD operations uh, to manipulate this uh, data structure, right? Uh, so, okay, let's uh, grab Mongoose. Uh, so we'll require Mongoose. And uh, we'll have to, uh, also we'll need the, uh, the schema. So we'll require the file that is in the same directory, and it's called user schema. There it is. Oops. And, and now we can create a new uh, user model, user, uh, user model. And we'll say um, it'll be um, uh, mongoose.model. Uh, mongoose 
And we're going to register this with a unique identifier of user model. And it says the schema, the structure of the schema that, uh, of the data that you're going to be storing and finding and retrieving and updating, it'll have this, this, this structure, user schema. So it'll, it'll make sure, it'll validate anytime we're inserting a, uh, objects, it'll validate making sure that the structure ha meets that schema. Make sense? Um, all right. Then, then we have all sorts of finder methods. So first, let's, uh, let's not implement all of them. Uh, let's uh, implement just, just to get us started. Right, so for instance, uh, let's uh, implement um, a, um, a create so that we can create some data. Uh, and let's uh, also implement find so we can retrieve and see all the users are there. Okay? All right, so let's do that. So we'll say, um, uh, let's uh, do a function, uh, create a user. And this will take us argument a user object, so user. All right, um, and, uh, and the way it's going to do it is that it's going to be using our user model, right? It's like, this is like our repository that has all generic uh, 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 functions. We can say user model create and user. All right, that's it. Uh, so let's try it out. Now to, now, to try it out, we actually need to connect to a database. Right? Connect to a database, uh, get a connection to the running Mongo uh, DB, right? And then we can start. Uh, sending data, right? things like such as uh, if we say uh, var user and we create a new user, and this would be uh, username uh, Alice uh, and password uh, password uh, Alice. Oh, maybe maybe we already have Alice. And we would like to be able to say uh, create user and pass in the user object. Yes. Well, let's see what database uh, we already have that we might have already. Uh, implemented last week. Uh, let's see. Do we have Mongo running? Mongo. Okay, so we not we don't have uh, MongoD running. So let's start it up. So they sudo MongoD. Okay, it's running. MongoDB is running. And in another tab, we're going to start the the Mongo client and uh, show the databases. Uh, and I think last week we had created a database already, right? Uh, Web Dev Summer 1 2018 Lectures. Let's see what's in there. Um, so we'll say use and then that database. And we can show if there's, see if there's any collections in there. It looks like we have a user collection, which happens to have the same name of the collection we want to manipulate here. Uh, so we can say um, db.user.find. Uh, it looks like we only have one, one user. It's called Alicia and has password Alice. Right? So we'll create a couple of other, other users. Hopefully, we'll go into this database. And, and, that's the, um, and that is the, uh, the name of the scheme of the uh, database that we're connecting to. All right, so to connect to a database, let's uh, go and, and um, let's take a look at if you go to mongoose.js, right, it gives you a, 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 an example of how to connect to a database. Right? Uh, first, you get a hold of uh, mongoose. Uh, and you say mongoose.connect. And, and uh, it's uh, MongoDB, local host, and then the name of the database you want to connect to. Pretty easy. All right, so let's do that. Let's grab that. Uh, so from, uh, from server, our server, uh, when it boots up, uh, what we'd like to be able to do is we're going to require uh, mongoose. There it is. We required it. And we're going to say connect. And the database is called, what was it? This is the database, right? Uh, select this. That's it. That's all we need to do to connect to a database. Right? So when the server boots up, it's going to connect to a database. And then everybody else can then, you know, any, any, any inserts, any updates, any deletes will go to that particular database. Okay? Um, all right. So let's see. So we have that. Um, and what do we have? Our, our, uh, uh, so here's our server. Uh, here's, I'm sorry. Here's our, our, um, our server. And our server, for now, let's have our server use the model, right? Actually create, the data, create that, that object. And the way we're going to do it is that we're going to load this uh, user model server. We want this to run. We want this, this, uh, this particular uh, function. Actually, how about, how about if we, um, what I'd like to be able to do is do, use, do this from outside, right? You have the, these, these functions. I like to be able to use this function from outside, right? Not not from within here. So let's just take that out, actually, uh, and let's export this as an API. Yes, like like, like we just saw earlier. So let's uh, we can declare an API. 
as a variable, as a map. Right? And uh, in here, we can say, well, we'll have a create user and bound to create user here. Okay? And then we're just going to export this. We're going to say module.exports equal API. All right, so from outside, if I require this file, I'll get this object. I'll get this object. Yes? And then I can call create user. Uh, all right, so let's do that. So from, from within the, uh, our, server, our server, I'm going to require that model. All right, so we're going to say uh, var user model. Uh, actually, I should use this. I should do, do this maybe down from down here somewhere. Oh, that, that was us playing around with the session, right? Uh, okay, so user model, I'm going to require. Uh, and let's see, where are we? We are in models. There we go. We have user and we have user model. Okay, so now that user model, what is it? It's mapped to this, to this object. So I can say uh, user model dot create user and I can pass a user object. Right? And I can pass it either as an argument right here or it could be a different object that I can, I can all together. So let's just play around. Let's uh, create a username, uh, Bob, and password, uh, Bob. All right, so if I start the server, uh, let's see, how do I can start the server? The server, our server, I can start it from right here. I can say node server. Uh, and complain, let's see what it's saying. Um, oh, OK. Uh, this, is, this is supposed to be a literal string. Let's try it again. All right, so the server's running, so it should have already called a create user. Right? Uh, let's, uh, let's uh, see if we find, notice that Bob is there, right? So it, it inserted Bob in there. Alice, Alicia was already there, right? It just inserted Bob. What we typically like to be able to do is not insert it when the server boots up. We, maybe we want to insert it when we hit it with a, uh, uh, with a RESTful API, maybe, and pass it some arguments. Right? Uh, we'll, we'll do that a little later. Right? We'll do that in a minute. Um, uh, the, other, the other thing that we'd like to be able to do is, is to be able to retrieve the data. Right? So instead of, instead of create user, let's, uh, let's comment that out. I don't want to create it every time I start the server. Um, what we'd like to be able to do is uh, retrieve anything that was already there. Yes. So if we go back to the model, we can uh, create our finder. We can say function. Uh, we can say find uh, all users. And we can say user model dot find. So user model dot find, find with no arguments means retrieve everything. Okay, retrieve everything. Uh, and, uh, and, and, then, and then we can't forget to ex export it, right? make it part of the, of the map that we're exporting, yes? So from outside, I should be able to say something like var user equal user model, user model, dot find all users. Right? And, we can and we can say console log users, users, right? Users. And you, you think this would work, right? Um, uh, are we, uh, so what's missing here? Uh, maybe a return, right? That would, that would help. That would return whatever this comes back with. And, uh, and, and so you'd think that this would work, but unfortunately it does not. Uh, so let's try it out. If we stop the server and we run it, uh, notice that we don't actually get all the users. Instead, we get this weird, huge object back from the finder, right? And what we're getting here is actually a, a, a query. We're getting a query, right, uh, instead of the actual data. So what happens is that what you get here is somewhat like, like a, what we did, but what happened in the client side, right, when we were trying to access uh, RESTful APIs, uh, the RESTful APIs, they were asynchronous calls that like, were coming from the React or the Angular client all the way to the server, right? And basically, we didn't want to block. We, we didn't want to wait. So we, we, we used this asynchronous API, right, uh, called the promises, right, so that you would have to explicitly say a then, uh, and then you would be called at some point in the future called back when the data came back, yes? Well, we have this exactly the same issue here. But instead of being from a browser to a server, it's now from a server to another server, right? From Node.js, the server, uh, trying to connect to a database server. See that? Right, so we have a network connection that, again, we don't want to block. We will also want that to be asynchronous. Make sense? Uh, so what's coming back from, uh, 
What's coming back from, from, from this, from this fine, from this fine is not the data. Instead, what we're getting back is a promise that at some point, hopefully in the near future, you will get called back with the actual data. Make sense? All right, so on this side of the server, instead of saying, instead of being in a, a synchronous call like this, it's an asynchronous call. All right, so what, what happened here is that user is, is going to be an empty array at first. Uh, and, and find all models, really what it does is that you get back a, 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 a promise and you, where you can register a callback. And I say, okay, when you get the data back from wherever, right, call me back at this function. Right? And at this function, hopefully, that will be the users. Right? And then I can, I, can, um, I, can de I can then just say console log users. I can then just print out the, the users. Make sense? So if I rerun this at the terminal, right, uh, notice that indeed now we do get the data. Right? We get Bob and we get Alicia. Make sense? All right, excellent. So with those two ideas right, of create, uh, and, uh, and, and, um, a create user and, uh, and, and find all users, we can do a lot of things. right? Uh, obviously, we would need a whole bunch of other finders and a whole bunch of other, other, other uh, APIs. But let's build them as we need them. Right? As we need them, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, cre we'll, we'll create them uh, as we go. Right? Uh, the, the next thing I'd like to be able to do, instead of, um, instead of having these uh, you know, run here at the command line, ideally, these would be mapped at a URL right? so that they can be accessed from anywhere. Right? Especially, in particular, we like to have it access from an Angular client. Right, so let's expose these as a RESTful API so that we can actually use them. All right? So let's take a look at that next. 